Hey there everyone, what's up? Back today with... <laughs> this is gonna sound unbelievable. Third part to my Shin Megami Tensei impressions video. And I wasn't originally planning on doing this. It wasn't originally gonna be like, I'm gonna do another part. But I've actually played through the game two more times since the last video. And I want to answer a few things that people were asking about in the comments. And it's not that much, so this shouldn't be that long. Hopefully it won't be that long. But I have gone through the game two more times, so I have seen the law ending and the neutral ending. Uh, I'm doing one final playthrough just to get the bad ending, so I have a save file with all four endings on it. But uh, I'm doing it as a Jack Frost challenge, so it's uh, my entire party is the Jack Brothers. It's got Jack Ripper and Jack Lantern and Jack Frost. So <laughs> that's my that's my fourth playthrough challenge. It's, it's fine so far. I've already made my perfect team going for it. But beyond that, I wanted to talk about a few of the things people are asking about. I forgot to mention about the music last time in the hour and a half impressions video, so I wanted to talk about the music a little bit. Uh, the music is actually really good in this game, but most of it is not new. Well, let me let me rephrase that. It's not entirely new. So it tends to have a lot of remixed versions of previous games music. So you'll re you'll recognize a lot of kind of uh, the music, the background music will be very recognizable from other places and other games. The map music from Shin Megami Tensei 2 is in there. And it's not the I don't believe it's on the map. I think it's like in the city or something. And I think there's music from Soul Hackers that Maybe Soul Hacker's music, or it's Shin Megami Tensei if music. Uh, I played those both recently, so which one it is, I'm not sure, and I'm not going to go back and check. So it's one of those, but just be be assured that the music is good, and it's generally remixed versions of previous songs. So it's good stuff. If you've enjoyed the music in previous games, you'll enjoy the music in this game. Um... What else? I wanted to talk about the alignment. Someone mentioned that in the comments that you could tell your alignment by which way you're twisting on the map, the, your icon, which way it turns, and that is true. That is how you tur knew your alignment in the previous games, uh, one and two, but um, in this game, you it, that is there, except there's actually an even easier way <laughs> that I'm stupid. I like totally didn't even notice the whole first playthrough. And it, it's weird because I actually talked to the person that tells you. There's actually a person at all the bars in Tokyo that will tell you your alignment. They don't say you're chaos or lawful. They give you like your, what do people think of you in town? And it's like, oh, they can't really get a judge or like, oh, you're kind of brash or, or uh, you know, you're someone who is really into order or something you know it's something like that it's not exactly those words um i'm just kind of paraphrasing from my memory but it's something like that so you can actually check your alignment at any of the bars around town it's not like uh it's unfortunately i, I want to say this is unfortunate that's not like how they did it in Shin Megami tensei strange journey where your name would change color depending on your alignment so in strange journey if you were if you were lawful you were, your name was blue. You knew you were lawful. Or if you're chaotic, you knew you're you're chaotic because your name was red. So or neutral is white. So <laughs> that's how it is in uh, this game. But it's not like that. It's not like that in Shin Megami Tensei 4. But you can tell. It's easy to tell. Just go to a bar and ask. Um, the only part where it gets tricky is there's a point in the game where you can't go to any of the bars and there's a lot of questions and a lot of things about alignment so you kind of have to guess for a good part of the game where it's important to guess correctly um, which brings me into the neutral route of the game the neutral route without a guide I want to say nearly impossible to get on the first playthrough um, you, you wouldn't be able to do it I don't think uh, you unless you were just really lucky or kind of schizophrenic. <laughs> that's, that's the only way I can explain it, because you you really have to know what questions you're going to get and how many there are be, before you can judge like what you're, how neutral you'll be. And I, and I say this from experience, because when I played through the game the first time, I mentioned that I finished on a Chaos route, and I intended to go 
my a neutral route on the second round and I knew where the questions would come for for alignment like where who which person are you siding with on, at this point and which when is it happening and I knew that the second time around but I still couldn't get the neutral route because I misjudged a lot of the parts where I didn't know the how much neutral or how much how much chaos or how much um, law points I guess I would say uh, how much it swayed me into that area so what I was doing was I went through it in a way that I was thinking oh well this is I in my head I'm telling okay I did one point towards chaos this way so it's one point towards law the other way for every every law or chaos question it doesn't actually work that way so the second time I played through and I ended up too lawful to get the neutral ending so there's a point in the game where you have to make a decision and it it's worth more points and I didn't know that and again there's I don't have a guide so I'm just doing this through my own testing so <laughs> you know playing through I ended up too lawful so I had to go through a third time and be really really careful with how much chaos and how much law I was and I finally did get the neutral ending on my third playthrough so it's really tough and if you had a guide it'd be probably pretty easy to get it uh, if you stayed really strict to the guy I'd say um, other than that good luck on your first playthrough with that it's probably not gonna happen but that's not a bad thing actually because uh, if you play through and you keep your levels and stuff I say this my second playthrough I want to say my first playthrough it took 70 plus hours it's a long time so you would think I don't want to play 70 plus hours again but it's actually not that when I played through the second time it took me about 15 hours to get to the <laughs> end of the game uh, you can just blow through it when you're at the highest level and you can summon back all your uh, high level demons like the entire game you can breeze through right up until the end so the second playthrough 15 hours my third playthrough the neutral playthrough um, about 25 hours I'd say and there there is a point because in the neutral playthrough after you've beaten the game once there are a lot of side quests that are necessary to do <laughs> I mean in in all the other playthroughs you don't have to do any of the side quests in neutral I mean in chaos or law side quests are optional you can skip them all in the neutral playthrough um, pretty much you have to do every side quest if you don't you can't proceed <laughs> like you can't go forward to the game you can't proceed so there's a point in the game where if you've already beaten the game once there's a lot of extra side quests that come in like a new game plus form and you know it makes the game longer it took me a lot of extra time even though I had done the vast majority of the side quests before I found a bunch of new ones that I didn't know existed and then I found a bunch of new ones that I wouldn't have known because I wouldn't have been able to get them in my first playthrough so I found a bunch of secret bosses a bunch of secret uh, summons things like that so it's quite a Mo uh, <laughs> the neutral route I'd say is the most satisfying ending I mean it's the most happy of endings I guess but it's uh, it's the past of path of most resistance it's difficult in time consuming in that you really have to do every single side quest and you have to defeat all the secret bosses uh, they're not really secret but they're optional bosses like uh, Beelzebub for a example is one of them you don't have to fight at all in the game if you just go for the normal route but you have to fight him in the uh, in the neutral route and I want to say even though I was saying in the previous videos that the game is generally a cakewalk for the bosses in most cases that battle was actually something I had to try like I had to actually form a <laughs> form a good strategy for to win it wasn't easy I mean, it wasn't difficult. It wasn't crazy difficult. Like, I was doing it for hours and hours. Like, I, it probably took me about four or five tries on the first time I got to him. Which is which is more than any of the other bosses in the game took. So, that was the... That was pretty much it. I think the, the way I won was that I swapped out one of the demons I was using. That was it. Essentially, I tried three times and I thought, well, this, this what I'm doing isn't working. I'll just swap one out. And then it worked and I was fine. So just a matter of, again, building a building a party that's worth having, <laughs> not not just building what you like, but building what you like with the skills that you need, which is an important important part of the game. 
So let's see. Uh, last thing, there are two more things. Unlocking special demons is possible in this game, but you have to defeat them. So usually through you unlock them through side quests or through progressing with the story. And of course, the neutral route is the best route to go for unlocking demons. You'll get the most from that route because you have to go both the chaos ending and the neutral, I mean the law ending to get the uh, get to the neutral ending. So you'll get more demons that way. The neutral route is the best way to go for unlocking stuff. Plus you'll get all the side, not all of it actually, you won't get everything, but you'll get most of the side, uh, side quest demons as well. Uh, there's some that you, if you don't do side quests early, you won't be able to go back to them. But for the most part, you can. So, um, but on the first playthrough, uh, it would be really hard to get neutral, I think. Not impossible, I don't think. I don't think it's impossible. I just think if you didn't have a guide, it would be nearly impossible. But the last question was about the DLC. And the game's DLC is essentially... Uh, balance breaking <laughs> um there's no i haven't bought any of the dlc but from what it seems all the deal the dlc pretty much just will give get you to max level in a ridiculously short amount of time and you know if you want to just blow through the game easily uh i guess you could do that just max thing max up to level 99 and summon whoever you think will be good but in some cases, that won't even really help you. Uh, towards the end, some of the bosses aren't going to... You can't just power level through. You can be level 99 and they'll still whoop up on you without a, without a good strategy. So, you know, it, where, whereas it is kind of balance breaking, you, will, you won't... Yeah, you won't technically... Uh, you know, it's not really... I never understood that kind of DLC, like who's buying it. I know some people are just like, well, I don't have time and I just want to see the story. Okay, I understand that, but... It's like pay, you have to pay extra money to get less game. I've never understood that. I, uh, you want to play the game less, so you pay more? I don't, I don't know. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. But I, I, I guess there's, there's an audience for it because apparently people are buying it. But uh, yeah, that w that's generally my thoughts on the DLC. There are some extra demon summons that you can get out of the DLC, but apparently they're just color swaps of existing demons not necessary to have, I guess. And since it doesn't give you a percentage of completion for the uh, Demon Compendium, who cares? It's not even really necessary. So if you're thinking of like, if you think you really don't want to play through the game that you bought, but you want to see the story, I guess you could buy the DLC. Have fun with that. But not for me. Uh, so I'm not, not, uh, not going to be buying the DLC. Um... Unless there's some extra DLC which adds like huge parts of the game, but I, I don't think that's the route they're going. So yeah, that's about it. This video was sh much shorter than the other ones, but still relatively long. So I'm going to end it here because that's all I got to talk about. But uh, that will probably be it for my Shin Megami Tensei 4 videos. I'm not going to put up any more unless... No, actually, I'll probably put up a uh, Jack Brothers Challenge versus Beelzebub which is probably the hardest boss in the game. Uh, if people find a harder boss, I'll put up another one fighting that boss with the Jack Brothers. But Jack Brothers Challenge, if anyone else wants to do it, it's essentially you can go through the game fighting the bosses with only Jack Ripper, Jack Lantern, and Jack Frost. All the way to the end. Uh, if you, you can refuse them. Obviously, you can refuse them to give them better abilities. But... Uh, you know, essentially you're going through the game with those three. I recommend doing that on a second playthrough, but on hard, of course. So, since hard can't be unlocked otherwise. But, yeah, that'll be it. So I'll catch you guys soon with some, I guess, E3 impressions in podcast format. But, yeah, I'll see you guys soon, I guess. Soon. Just soon. See you next time.